Fine traveling with you, gentlemen. May our paths cross again. I'm sure they will, Mr. Dogan. Right. Ahead of schedule. That's the first time that's happened in years. Ahead of schedule? Yeah. Well, don't apologize. These things happen. It's been a bit of a dry trip. Would it be imposing for you to keep me luggage? No, not at all. I'll put it right over here, and the agent will keep an eye on it for you. Now, this agent, would he know an inhabitant by the name of Benjamin Cartwright? Everyone around here knows the Cartwrights and the Ponderosa. Then he wouldn't mind telling Benjamin I'll be waiting for him in the saloon. Thank the both of you. Ah, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Mr. Dugan. Would you like me to take care of that little black bag for you? Thank you, no. Greetings, gentlemen. Greetings. Yes, sir. I'll have something light, if you don't mind. Light, sir? What about three ounces of whiskey will be fine? That's light enough not to strain a man's arm. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a pity for me to drink it all by myself. Set them up for everybody, will you? I'll smoke it the boys over. Welcome to Virginia City, sir. Yes, you know, in my opinion, a friendly saloon is the crown of our entire civilization. <laughs> I couldn't agree with you more. All right, gentlemen, to the health and to the good fortune of everybody. It's hmm. excellent. It's excellent. <sighs> I always wanted to wear one of them fancy hats. I'm sorry, my friend, but uh, this was one time the property of the Honorable James Buchanan, who was the 15th President of the United States. I, I captured it, as you might say, at the great Democratic Convention of 1856. Is that supposed to mean that it's too good for the likes of me? No, not at all, at all. It's just I have a fierce pride, you know, in being only the second man to wear the favorite hat of the 15th president. Well, let me warn you, mister. There's going to be a third. Oh. Take patience, will you? Nobody does that to me. Now, easy, Patrick. Nobody! You hurt the little fellow. Now, you stop it. You pick on someone your size. <laughs> Yeah. Touche, as the saying is. Now, mind your manners. These things will happen, lads. Don't let it interrupt your drinking. Yeah. Yeah. O'Neill. Mm. O'Neill, sit down. Now, just stay put. You're drunk. Let's not get into any fights. Stay right where you are. Look at that, will you? Look at that. Nothing's changed. It's exactly the way we met 25 years ago. That's right, Oni. And I might have known I'd find you in the middle of a big fight. <laughs> oh, how are you, my boy? Just wonderful. It's good to see you. Now, we're going out to the Ponderosa. We've got a lot of talking over to do. Come on. Give me that little black bag there, will you? <laughs> Peace on earth, gentlemen. <laughs> Oni, oh, you know, you're you're talking, you're talking, you're talking. Talking. I might have known he'd be a friend of the high and mighty Ben Cartwright. It'd be a pleasure to kill them both. Mr. 
These must be your fine lads. Ah, yes, they are. Mr. Owen P. Dugan of New York City, meet my son, Hoss. Happy right. to have you here, sir. Little Joe. Pleasure to have you with us. We've heard a lot about you. And right behind him is the finest cook in the West, Hopsing. Now, I don't know if uh, Mr. Dugan owns Manhattan Island outright or just holds a long-term lease on it. <laughs> if I told you how long I'd known your father, you might discover he's been lying about his age. <laughs> <laughs> get Mr. Dugan's bag. Right, <laughs> it's a very impressive place. Our home is your home. Stay a lifetime. It's just possible I'll do that. <laughs> Those are the wild, wild days. It's a shame. I tell you, lads, whenever there was trouble, you know, and, a, and a man needed a friend, there your father would be, like a tiger, like a tiger in the streets. <laughs> oh, don't pay too much attention to what he says. Every second word he utters is pure blarney. So am I saying too much? Am I giving away some <laughs> state secrets? <laughs> no, I am surprised that he has never told you about his youthful adventures, you know. Well, if only to educate you oh, no. along historic, what's the matter? Mm -hmm. And along Come cultural on. lines, Come huh? You know, it's funny because Paul's always been very quick with that cultural stuff, hasn't he, Joe? Oh, yeah. Of course, there may have been some cultural aspects that haven't slipped their <laughs> mind, Paul. Some I mean, you didn't happen to mention to us. <laughs> oh, well, just let me tell you something. I'm not going to allow myself to be blackmailed in my own home by a wild, imaginative, loose-tongued Irishman. <laughs> well, you're lucky because we're going to have to turn in. we got to get up early. Yep. See you in the morning. Only good night. Good night, Good night, Good night. I'm not fool with Tiger in street. <laughs> <laughs> Those are two fine lads. You're a lucky man. Baby. Oh, I know it. I know it. Tell me about your daughter, Julie. I was hoping you'd ask. I tell you one thing. She is her mother, born again. Oh? Isn't she? Hmm? Oh, my. She's beautiful, honey. Beautiful. She's living in San Francisco. Yes, I sent her there to school after her mother passed away. That's nine years ago. Mm. St. Rose's Academy, and now she's at the College of Sacred Heart. Wow. And she is a lady to her fingertips. You haven't seen her in all this time? No, I was all mixed up, you know, with my factories and steel mills and shipping interests. That's the way life goes, what with one thing or another. And that is why I'd like to settle here in the West. Not to be sitting on the poor girl's doorstep, exactly. But to be reasonably near in case she needed me. Like this area, for example. You know what I'd like? I'd like to invest in a business of some sort. Around here? Yes, like a racetrack in Carson City. Well, you know what I've always dreamed of doing? What? To own and operate the biggest saloon in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, you'd make a fortune. <laughs> Only, I think your ideas are just a little too rich for people around here. Oh, there's some very good investments around here, very practical investments that could be made. Are you really serious? Did you see that bag over there? Huh? I'm at least that serious. You don't think I carry this bag around with me because I'm afraid somebody will steal my laundry, do you? There is $114,000 in this bag. It's the proceeds from a little brewery I sold in Boston. You're not joking. I never make that expensive a joke. Won't you take this and invest it for me? Me invest that for you? Oh, wait a minute. But I don't get the problem. We're both businessmen. I've been here for eight or nine hours. I've talked with both of your sons. It's as clear to me as a cow in a teacup that you are the number one citizen of Virginia City, and you're a man so honest that it hurts all over. And what is the most important thing of all is, after all, you're my closest and my best friend. Well? Now, look, only I... I have never been comfortable using other people's money, investing people, but I, I couldn't do it. I, I wouldn't know how to... There is a, there's a very good thing around here I think we might be interested in this. What do you know about lumber? Yes, it comes from trees. <laughs> but... <laughs> oh, no, be serious now. No, there's a, a piece of land, a, a lumber tract, which I have an option on it. I refrain from exercising the option on it. I didn't want to spread myself too thin. Now, if you're really serious about investing a hundred thousand dollars... Let's start. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute now, Oni. This is your money we're talking about, not mine. Now, you, you've got to know everything about this kind of operation. Now, if we were talking about entering into a pawn shop, we'll say, in the Bowery, well, then I'd expect you to take my advice. But here we are in your territory, and I'd be only too eager and too proud to take your advice. As simple as that? As simple as that. 
We're in business, right? <laughs> yes, I, <laughs> I guess we're in business, right? <laughs> Take it, count it, and put it in the safe. Only I... Right! <laughs> huh? Your name, mistakes. Duke and O'Reilly, who yet? Oh, what was your name? Ah, good morning, Hopsing. I'm sorry that I'm late for breakfast. That's all right, Mr. Tukin. Five more minutes, you late for dinner, too. <laughs> well, that's the wasteful, sinful habits of a lifetime. There's nothing you can do about it now. Where's everybody? Mr. Cartwright just come back from town. He in kitchen. Sit down. I'm fixing dinner. Very good. Well, yeah, you're not much of a family for lounging around in the morning, are you, Ben? I uh, can't afford to. I just came from town. I just put you in the lumber business, lock, stock, and one hundred thousand dollars worth. Well, <laughs> oh, I listen. Never... There's a telegram for you. For me? Hmm? Say. That's from Julie. She's coming here to Virginia City. Well, that's great news. What's the matter, Ollie? Aren't you pleased? Well, of course I am. It's just that I have no recollection of writing the lass and telling her that I was going to stop here on my way to San Francisco. Oh, but I did. I remember now. I must be losing memory in my old age. It's a very happy day for me, Ben. Oh, well, it's a happy day for all of us. Dinner is served. Come on, let's eat. Now, Ben, after dinner, you know what I like? I, I, I like to take a ride up and and uh, look at me investment. Well, I'll ride up with you. No, if you'll just show me the way. I, I'd like to go alone. I suddenly got a bit of thinking to do. All right. There you are. Very well. It isn't a respectable member of the organization. Only himself. Come in, come in. Greetings, children. Have you gotten any leads on putting some of the boodle into an honest business? That's why they sent me here, isn't it? I'm a silent partner in the lumber business with an old friend, Ben Cartwright. Fine, fine. We've heard the name mentioned since we've been here. He's a respected man. Listen, I'm going to see to it that his name stays respected. You'll do what you're told, and don't forget it. Don't threaten me, lad. I have a short Celtic temper. I'm not threatening you, only... But if you want your daughter to find out what you've been doing all these years, well, that's up to you. So it was you that sent her that telegram? Ah, just following orders, only. Just following orders. Like you will. Am I right? Yes, you're right, lad. We'll expect another report soon. He'll stay in line. as we once knew it is changing. Is it not? For example, you remember Brooklyn? Yes, yeah, 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 certainly. Now, there's talk of one day making Brooklyn a part of New York City. Really? Yes, it's as clear a case of joining a silk purse to a sow's ear as ever I've heard. <laughs> ah, look at that. Behind the wagon! Uh, 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 only stay down, stay down. 
survive his deathbed confession. <sighs> Only I can't use that money. Why can't you use it? Because I can't. It's not as though you stole it yourself. If I used that money, it would be exactly as if I'd stolen it myself. Oh, Ben, for heaven's sakes. When you thought you were dying, I heard you say with my own ears that you wished you had a chance to live your life over again. I did. Well, you have your chance now. How? What? Now, I, I don't want to be a conscience. But the thought occurred to me that if you really wanted another chance, you'd give back that money. <laughs> you know, that that is the maddest statement that I've ever heard in my life. Why? Well, in the first place, politics is politics. And then no decent man would ever betray his fellow thief. And besides, it's not so easy as all that, you know. 
You can't look a crooked dollar in the face and you say, oh, this dime belongs to that construction job and this 15 cents belongs to the other. It's all mixed up. It's all part of the system. And then in the long run, what does it matter? Well, it matters to me. Now, Ben, look, this lumber deal is already underway and Haas is up there right this very minute. That's right. Well, you need the money. Yes, I do. Ben. My little girl, Julie, will be here in a few days. Yeah? And you won't allow any of this to make any difference with Julie, will you? Well, what do you think? Well, I, I think that you know she's the only good and decent thing in my life. And that I'd sooner die, for real, you know then give her one moment of heartache. Hey, Miss Dugan? Miss Julie Dugan? Yes. I'm Joe Cartwright. I've come to meet you. Well, you must be Ben Cartwright's son. That's How right. good of you to meet me. Oh, it's my pleasure. Where's father? Oh, uh, your, uh, your father's waiting for us at the house. He, he had sort of an accident. Is he all right? Oh, yeah, yeah. He's fine. He's fine. We were a little worried about him for a time. He's up and around now like a nervous rooster. We almost had to tie him down to keep him home. I can hardly wait to see him. Well, my pa's over taking care of some business. I'll get your luggage down, and as soon as he gets back, we'll be on our way. Uh -huh. Just sit over there and rest yourself. Let me have that back, Charlie. I signed this contract with you in good faith, Mr. Cartwright. Now, it was my understanding that I'd get my $100,000 today. You're absolutely correct, Mr. Gibbon. I'm trying to explain to you. An unforeseen circumstance has arisen, and I must ask you for a slight extension so that I can raise the money elsewhere. Well, I'm not happy about this at all. Not at all. Time is money. You've already started your lumbering operations on my land, and I'm expected to wait for the money. Oh, Mr. Giblin, I, I'm not asking for, for a year's extension. It's just a couple of days, and I hope that you think that I'm good for it. <laughs> I'm certain of that, Mr. Cartwright. However, I uh, shall expect reasonable recompense for allowing late delivery of the lease money. There'll um, have to be certain alterations in our contract. Uh, what are you suggesting? Well, I've no wish to be hard on you, Mr. Cartwright, but uh, business is business. Shall we say 25% uh, of your gross on the operation? 25%. <laughs> Mr. Gibbon, I thought you used the word reasonable. What you're suggesting is highway robbery. Take it or leave it. Well, that's the way you're going to put it, Mr. Giblin. I will leave it. And I will leave your land tomorrow. You'll pay damages. Reasonable damages, Mr. Giblin. Reasonable damages. Did you ever fly with Riley in his wondrous gas balloon? Up and over the lovely city by the pale light of the moon. I've never flown with Riley because I can plainly see that living the life of Riley might well be the death of me. <laughs> now try it, will you? All right, everybody. Right, here we go. Never fly with Riley in this wondrous gas balloon. I've flown with a lovely sea by the pale light of the moon. No, I've never flown with Riley because I can plainly see that living the life of Riley might well be the death. My darling, when I look at you, I feel 30 years younger. Oh, Papa. When I try to get up, I feel 40 years older. Well, old man, let me help you. Oh, oh, there we are. Bring on the red coat. <laughs> right. That was fun. But I think I could do with a breath of air. Uh, you know, you I know was what, just about to suggest... Just... Shall we go? <laughs> Excuse us. Well, how delightful to be escorted by two gentlemen. <laughs> mm. 
Well, I can see why you're so proud of her. She's beautiful. Just beautiful. Yes, she is. That she is. It's a lovely evening. Yeah. It's more than I deserve. Oh, it's a grand evening. Do you ever fly with Riley in his wondrous gas balloon? Oh, I, I meant to ask you. What? How did you get along today with that Mr. Giblin? Oh, Mr. Giblin. Uh, not too well. <laughs> but don't worry. Somehow we'll work things out. Tell me the truth. Didn't he give enough time to raise the money? Well, yes, as a matter of fact, he did. And all he wanted in return was 25% of the gross. <laughs> Why, that crook. Yes, that's what I thought, too. You're not going to do business with him under those circumstances. I'm not going to do business with him under any conditions. I'm pulling my man of machines off his place down tomorrow morning. That'll cost you a pretty penny. Well, it'll be cheaper in the long run. Ah, it's all my fault. Oni, let's talk about something pleasant, shall we? How about a brandy? All right. All right. Giblin. Giblin. Oh, I've never flown with Riley, because I can plainly see how living the life of Riley might well be the death of me. Did you ever fly with Riley? In his wondrous gas balloon, up and over the lovely city. If you plunge your arm into this little black bag, you will find not a snapping frog, but $114,000 in cash. You say you're looking for some profitable business venture in which to invest your money? Yes, I am. You've come to the right place, Mr. Dugan. I thought I had. By the way, will you call me Oni? Uh, regarding my investment, Mr. Giblin. Uh, call me Hubert. All right, Hubert. Yeah, I think that you have a building here in town by the name of the Golden Horseshoe. Yeah, that white elephant. Oh, yes, 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 yes. A sturdy structure. <laughs> well, I see you have that rare ability to realize the business potential of the place. I'm glad you see it that way. It makes it easier for me to propose the partnership that I have in mind. Now, you provide the building. And I will use this entire sum to make a grand and elegant place. With the proper financing, it uh, just might be quite a success. With what I have in mind, it'll be packed. It'll take a man of vision like yourself to make a go of a place that size. A man of vision, yes. What's better than myself? Someone more experienced. I have a father in New York. He's run a place like twice that big for years now. He'll be taken over. Father, you say? <laughs> well, no offense, but uh, isn't he a trifle old to be working? <laughs> there is no substitute for experience, right? <laughs> yeah, you make the offer sound most attractive. And we'd split the profits 50 50. Right down the line. And I'll draw up the uh, partnership agreement right away. Just one thing. Now, I may have to loan this money temporarily to a friend of mine before we go into business together. His name is Cartwright. Is that uh, Ben Cartwright? You know him. Uh, we've met. Well, then you understand that he keeps things to himself. But I was able to find out that he'd made a bad lumber deal. He has to pay out an unfair portion of his profits. I may have to force this money onto him in order to help him get out of it. It just so happens that uh, I have some uh, influence with the timber interests here. I just might be able to prevail upon them to be a little bit more reasonable, Mr. Cartwright. Well, in that case, I wouldn't have to lend that to him, would I? And we could proceed with our little business agreement. Exactly. Onward and upward, as they say. <laughs> Only you taught my language. Hubert, I should. I've had a lot of practice. <laughs> well, shall we get to this partnership agreement? Good yeah. idea. I have it right here with me. Sign there. I don't know what kind of a tree you fell out of, but I can guarantee you're a nut. How can I take a job chopping trees if I'm going to spend the next ten years in jail? Well, that's an interesting question. Now I've got one of my own. What have you got against the Cartwrights? Oh, I don't know. It's... It's... Well... It isn't easy to say. Well, think deep about it. 
I still don't know. When I'm sober, I don't seem to mind them too much. Ah, well, why don't you try staying sober for a little bit? Well, I can try. All right, then. I'll withdraw the charges against you. I'll straighten things out with the sheriff and the judge. And I'll arrange some kind of a parole. Well, you hear what I said? I hear you, but I don't believe you. Why would you do this? Well, it's not an easy thing to explain. It has something to do with balancing the books. It has something to do with casting the first stone. And something to do with the fact that a man by the name of Patrick O'Neill can't be all bad. I'll drink to that. Honey, it was nice of you to get Patrick O'Neill out of jail. You know, of course you were right. He wasn't, he wasn't intending to kill us. He was drunk. But do you really want me to hire him? Well, you said yourself he was one of the best logger foreman in the business when he was sober. Ah, exactly. When he was sober. And he hasn't been that in a long, long time. He'll change. A man may be down, but he's never out. Well, all right. I'll hire him. But the first time he's in trouble on the job, I'll have to get rid of him. I don't think he will. But you sure are right about people changing. <laughs> you know, yesterday, that fellow given, I wouldn't have given a dead coyote for him. And today, he gives me all the time I need to pay when I owe, no penalties attached, all free and clear. He's a changed person. He is? Well, I never. Hey, yeah, you see, you give people enough time and they'll mend their evil ways, as my grandmother used to say. <laughs> well, I gotta get me an early start. I'll see you in the morning. Help yourself. Oh, yes. Ah, oh, look at that, will you? You know, we don't have trees this tall in the east, but we've got more squirrels per square foot. <laughs> There's Patrick. Now, if Ireland had this much timber, we'd have overwhelmed the English with our shillings. <laughs> Tony, pour a little jewel over here. Aye. Who's that, Pop and Jay? He happens to be a very good friend of mine, that's who. Any more questions? Not with the answers you give. Well, then let's get on with the work. Well, you better have the men clear the lower slope first, huh? Yeah, that'll make it easy to skip the logs down from the upper ridge. Yeah. Men! <laughs> well, how are you? <laughs> yes, your men are as busy as a pocket full of bees. Yeah, they sure are. And that Patrick, how is he working out so far? Oh, he's, he's doing great. Great, he's a good foreman. Because I just can't figure out how he managed to hire every Irishman in town since this morning. <laughs> But you can't trust him. He's from the north. Now, you forgive me, I've got a bit of my own business to do in town. And I'll see you, though. Right. Hey, what kind of business is only getting? Well, I don't know, but that Barney, he's going to get through it without much of a struggle, I'll guarantee. <laughs> I may. I think, however, that he's going to have a bit of a struggle on his hands, just the same. And with what? With himself. With himself. It's a nice day. It was a nice day. The sight of you two would chase a snake up a rope. You don't really mean that. We've been kind of worried about you, Oni. Let's go over to the saloon and have a little drink. Come off of it, Tilly. I'm here as a retired gentleman, rich and respectable. What would I be doing with the likes of you? We're simply fellow New Yorkers you happen to meet. Uh, interested in a little friendly business conversation. Yes. Uh, you want to be friendly, don't you? I do not. Well, extend yourself. Oh, Anything you need, Mr. Dugan, just call on me. Thank you, Bruno. <laughs> and I, I must say, you're a big man in town, only. It's royal treatment every time. That's because I'm not shanty Irish like you. Uh, Bruno can sense the royal blood in my veins. Sure, Roni, sure. It may seem a bit unfriendly, our checking up on you like this, 
But the organization's a little nervous these days. There's a new atmosphere back home. What with the reformers sticking their sharp blue noses into everything except a man's morning coffee. Tweed himself was worried about the last report. The boys would like to check on the current state of their um, investments, is the word we use. What's that got to do with me? Well, you took a hundred odd thousand dollars out of New York to invest it in some honest enterprise with your friend Mr. Cartwright. That was with the boys' approval. What about it? You didn't invest it with Cartwright. You deposited the Virginia City Bank. Not only was the money deposited, but you've been withdrawing big chunks of it in bank drafts. Why? Well, uh, I think you two deserve some answers, and I'm going to give them to you. Now, I tell you. You recall that big saloon in the corner, the one with the handsome pillars? You mean the one that's vacant? The same, only it won't be vacant long because I'm taking it over, and it'll be the biggest in the West. That's your investment. It is. So you see, I couldn't ask Cartwright to go in with me because he knows nothing about it. So I went big with Giblin. <laughs> and I must say, Ollie, you never did think small. That's what the bank drafts were for. I sent for the equipment, and it took almost all of the $114,000. But it was worth it. I'm starting on the inside first, so that we can open sooner. Good thinking. I thought you'd see it my way. I'm sorry if we uh, appear to be a bit rough on you, but, uh, well, that's our job, you understand. And I, uh, I really want to say it, and I mean it from the heart. I'm glad we didn't have to tell Julie about your misguided past. Of course I understand, and now you can report that only Dugan has made the smartest investment in his life. Shlanta. 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 Good day, gentlemen. The saloon business. The golden horseshoe. Golden horseshoe? Only when I... When I heard that you'd bought that saloon, I could not believe my ears. On your own deathbed, you confessed to me that that money that you had was stolen money. It was tainted money. And the moment you find out that you're not going to die, what do you do? You buy a saloon with it. I didn't buy it. Well, whatever you did with it. You don't understand, Ben. No, I don't understand. Now, will you kindly explain? Well, I can't do it yet. You will have to give me one week. Only I have... You Darling, darling. Ah, oh, you, you should have been in bed uh, hours ago. We were just talking over a little business, Ben and I. Nothing you'd be interested in. You didn't hear us, did you? Do you think in all these years I didn't know what you were doing? The stolen money, the deals, the payoffs. You must have misunderstood. No, Papa. I know everything. Everything? Yes. Oh, my friend. You may think it's strange, but I wish I'd been killed by that bullet. Be less painful than this. Oh, oh. If only I had another week. Do you think in one week you could make up what you've done in a lifetime? Oh, no. But as my grandfather used to say, I can try. After all, it only took six days for the Lord to make the whole earth. The owner's missing breakfast together this morning. Yes, fifth day in a row. I heard him leaving when I was getting dressed. No can understand Mr. Tukin. At first, all time late for breakfast. Now, too early. Huh. Senator. Looks like he's going to go ahead with the saloon, huh? Sure does. He's very serious about it. Let's see if he can get up to the lumber camp.
Two. My week is up. I want you to come into town with me. Town for what? My shipment's coming in. Now, this is the last favor I'll ask you. Now, you come on, will you? And will you bring Patrick O'Neill with you? Will you? All right, yeah. all right, I'll do it. We better get Patrick O'Neill. Come on, let's go. Well, today's the big day, eh, partner? That it is, partner. That it is. And here she comes now. I can hardly wait to see our equipment, Oni. Undoubtedly the finest marble top bar, cup crystal chandeliers, plate glass mirrors, piano, and rugs as thick as bearskins. <laughs> I can't imagine an operator like you buying second-rate furnishings. I didn't. Be assured of that. Back we are, Fly with Riley. All right, yeah. Hello, take the covers off there, will you? That's an altar. It is. What's this all about, Mr. Dugan? Now, call me Oni. Well, where's the fixtures? You ordered for the saloon. Saloon? I don't recall guaranteeing that there'd be a saloon. What was all that talk about your father coming from the East to run the place? Well, not my father, a father. Father O'Brien, and a very fine man <laughs> he is, too. Don't you try to cheat me, you crook. I own half of this place. I've got a paper to prove it. But it's my investment, too, and I say it'll be a church. It's a long way from being a church, and you know it. As far as I'm concerned, it's a saloon, and it's going to stay that way. And I say that it'll be a church. We'll see about that. All right, see about it. What are you staring at there? Give him a hand, will you? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> oh, my darling, darling, it's the least I could do. Hey! Go on! Pitch in, will you? You know, this is the church you'll be attending from now on. Unless, of course, you intend to go back to New York and give Boss Tweed a full progress report. Hey, hey. There's a bit of equipment that's been long time needed around here. And I hope you'll be spending a good deal of time in it, Papa. I will, I promise. Cartwright! Mr. Cartwright! Giblin's been tearing around town hiring every tough he can find. Well, that doesn't surprise me at all. He's the type who'd steal a dead fly from a blind spider. I guess he tends to make good on his threat. Well, we're not going to have too much longer to find out. I told you I'd be back, Dugan. We'd not have been disappointed in the least if you'd failed to keep a promise, Mr. Gaboon. That's Giblin. I'm a man of action and I'll not be cheated. All right, man, you know what I hired you for. Everything goes back in those wagons. You're a smart man, Mr. Giblin. And you'd be smarter still if you'd buy these poor young men a drink and not let them get their heads broken. Walk right over the top of him if you have to. He's only one uh, man. Uh, Given? Does it make any difference? And besides me friends there, it may interest you to know that it wasn't for nothing that I hired the firm of Duffy and McGee to do me hauling. I'll double your pay. Now get in there and get him. Let's get him! <laughs>
Well, now that that's over with, is there any further business matters you'd like to be discussing with me? The church is all yours. <laughs> there we are. I want to thank you, but didn't I tell you he was a tiger in the street? <laughs> You know, how can I ever thank you, gentlemen, for the magnificent help you've given me over the last oh, three well, weeks? It looks wonderful. That comes to me, Father. Ah. Oh, Father O'Brien, welcome to the Wicked West and your new parish. <laughs> ah, you remember my daughter, Julie? Yes, yes. Julie, oh, bless your heart. Hello, Father. Now, yeah, these are my good friends, the Cartwrights. How do you do, gentlemen? Father, well, how are you? Well, I, I, I've got to be admitting it, Tony. It's every bit like you said it was in your letter. Indeed it is. Now, about the church. We haven't even started on the outside yet, you know. It looks like the devil. But the inside, it looks like heaven itself. I'm sure anyone can tell at a glance. It's a fine, upstanding... Peace, love and tell. <laughs> which nobody can deny, my friend. Which nobody can deny. Uh -huh. <laughs> Come along, father. Oh, <laughs> in <laughs> Which nobody can deny. <laughs> <laughs>